So just to kind of formally introduce um, everything, my name is Haley Prottle. I'm the program manager here with the Institute of International Education. Um, me and the amazing team here support the uh, recruitment and support and outreach services for Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence and promoting the fantastic graduate programs at the University in Artificial Intelligence. Um, we're really excited to be with you all today. I welcome those who are prospective students who joined us. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, say your name, your university, um, and um, as well as maybe where you're joining us from today. I know we have several time zones and countries and regions represented, so we'd love to see that um, in the chat as well. Um, before I kind of go into the slides, actually, let me just pause here. Um, I will have um, Sultan, who we just heard from a little bit earlier, um, formally introduce himself. If you don't mind, Sultan, sharing your name, where you're from, what major you're in, um, and you know when you're getting ready to graduate, which was shared before we started the recording as well. Thank you. Uh, I am Sultan Abu Ghazal, and I joined uh, MBZUAI. Uh, the computer vision uh, master's program in the beginning of uh, 2021. Uh, so that was the, the first batch. I was the president of the student council for a little over a year. And uh, yeah, I'm about to graduate. Uh, I'm one of those uh, students uh, who entered the university with some work experience. I worked for three years as a uh, uh, as a GIS consultant, which is like kind of a software developer. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to also introduce our other um, team members from IIE as well. So I'll have um, a Cece, maybe you can introduce yourself briefly, then we'll go to Shahru and then Rebecca. So Cece, if you want to start us off. Hello, everyone. I'm CC from IAE Bangkok. I oversee the outreach and support for the students from East Asia region and Southeast Asia University. Happy to support you. Hope you have a great session today. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Shakruk Mahkamjanov. I am a regional outreach manager for the region of uh, Europe, Eastern Europe and Central Asia. So. I'm here to help uh, if you have any questions regarding the application and uh, uh, applying for the MBDUI, I will be happy to help. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Rebecca Morris and I work with Haley at IIE based in DC and it's great to meet you all. Thank you all, thank you so much. Um, so I'm just gonna do the briefest of brief uh, reminders. Um, I know we have folks here who are very familiar with MBC UAI and those who are just kind of learning about the university. Um, so again, MBC UAI is Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. Um, I shared the screen before, but encourage you for those who just hopped on, if you haven't already before, scan the QR code, let us know who you are, what your interest is program wise. Um, you can take a look at these links as well, and you have our contact information. We will be sharing out these slides following the call as well, so you have um, the ability to connect with us. And yes, thank you, Sultan. He is also, um, he's from the region, so he's from Jordan. Um, selfishly, I think one of my favorite countries in the world. I personally lived and worked there for a year, so it's fantastic. Um, uh, we have a just brief slide here on an overview of what MVC UAI is. We have um, three different departments, um, amazing faculty from around the world. We'll hear a little bit more about this, I'm sure, from Sultan. But we have over 30 nationalities represented in our student body. So it truly is a global diverse community that you get to study and research alongside with. And you can see fantastic highlights from the university. In terms of the program offerings, again, this shouldn't be new information to most of you all. Um, MVZ UAI is the first graduate level research-based university that's focused on artificial intelligence. They offer AI specializations for master's and PhD programs in the different areas. We heard that Sultan is getting his degree in computer vision. There's also offerings in machine learning and natural language processing. Again, the teaching and research at MVZ UAI is top tier. There's fantastic benefits. Um, and it really is um, a leader in the field. Um, in terms of the admissions criteria, we encourage you to dig into this on your own time. But again, just for a general overview, we encourage you to just have a STEM background, academic um, standing that is um, excellent, of course, is encouraged. Um, and we will be happy to support you in the application process and making sure that you have everything that you need to be a competitive applicant. 
So again, there's the admissions criteria for the master's and PhD programs, as well as those who currently have a bachelor's degree but are interested in getting a PhD as well. Um, for the admissions process, there is that application. And then following that, which I'm sure we'll kind of get into um, in this Q&A session and future ones, is there's an admissions interview and an entry exam if you continue to move forward in the admissions process. Um, the scholarship benefits are um, really fantastic. I candidly have worked on a lot of scholarship programs. This is the, the best that I've seen in terms of covering your tuition and fees for the duration of your program. You receive a generous monthly stipend. Fantastic housing is provided by the university along with health insurance. Um, there's also annual round trip airfare to and from Abu Dhabi, which is where MBC UAI is based in the UAE, less than an hour from Dubai. And there's no post-graduation bond. So a lot of times, um, again, we'll see students, especially as we have this upcoming graduation cohort who may opt to stay in the UAE, who might return to their home countries, um, who might go on to other countries. So it's exciting to see where these students go on to. So that's it for the intro slides. Again, we'll share those out with everyone um, so that you have access to this information as well. Um, but excited to kind of switch gears to our Q&A session as well. Um, so we'll start Sultan with a couple of questions. We welcome you as students. Um, as we kind of move forward, please feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat or use the raise hand function and then we can take your questions. We do have some prepared as well, but obviously your um, questions as prospective students are our priority. So. Again, please feel free to use the raise hand function or drop your question in the chat if you would prefer and we can address those. But I'll just go ahead and get us started um, with you, Sultan, as well as you shared at the beginning for those who are interested in applying um, that um, you're going to be graduating in December. So could you share a little bit about kind of the beginning of your story and how did you even first learn about MBC UAI? You mentioned that you're from Jordan, so outside of UAE, and just what initially made you interested in applying? Um, yeah, so I I am from Jordan, but I was born and I lived my whole life here in the UAE. Uh, so I heard about it. Uh, first, I was I was looking uh, to do my master's uh, degree, and I heard about it uh, through a, through a friend, uh, and I was like, okay, let me let me apply. I was interested in the computer vision uh, program because it aligned with the experience that I gathered so far at the time. So yeah, and uh, I applied and I went through the um, admission uh, process and uh, I ended up uh, like one of the last ones to get uh, uh, admitted to the university. Yeah, so the beginnings uh, of, um, of our study here was actually like uh, some of the most memorable times that that uh, like I had in my life, uh, we were around uh, less than a hundred students, and uh, like everyone, and uh, it was uh, really fun to uh, work together and uh, like explore those topics together. Most of us did not have uh, prior experience in the uh, topics that we were studying, so it uh, it really helped a lot that uh the community was very close to each other because we we helped each other a lot everyone everyone who had um, uh, like good skills in one uh, in one uh, field or in one area they would uh, like host uh, study groups and and just teach everyone else or whoever wants to uh, to teach them this uh, this topic or for example because i from from uh, prospective students and, and from new students, I hear a lot uh, that they worry about uh, the programming skills that they may, might have, or like they're they're sometimes not very confident with what they know. Uh, now, programming is a requirement for admission. There is there is a a, a test uh, in the admission process, uh, but specifics to machine learning and, and a programming that is specific to machine learning or computer vision, uh, you will you will get through it. So it's it's not it's not that uh, difficult. Like in, in like in a in a matter of uh, two or three months, you it will be it will be easy for you. Yeah. Thank you, Sultan. That's great. That's great to hear kind of your experience and background and what drew you to the university as well as kind of the entry point as well. Um, I wanted to check earlier, I saw Nadim, um, you had your hand raised, feel free to unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Haley. Uh, so can you hear me properly? 
Yes, all set. Okay, cool. Um, so my name is Nadim. I'm a computer science undergraduate studying at Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar. And uh, I just wanted to ask you, Sultan, like, why did you choose this university for your master's program over other opportunities that I'm sure you must have had? Because personally, like, I've never heard of this place until uh, I did through like some university careers office stuff. And I'm just wondering, like, what was it that made you go for like this decision over over any others that you had? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good question. Um, well, it's it's a new university, and uh, they're they're heavily also um, uh, looking for students in in uh, like abroad and uh, other countries. That's why you heard through uh, through the uh, your university or. or that's that's how you heard about the university. So uh, the university, I think uh, Haley already went through what the university is offering. And uh, to me, it was like to me where I was in my career and uh, and all that. The, what the university offered was actually very competitive, and uh, I don't think there is any other university that offers this. Now you might argue that. Uh, it might not get uh, that accreditation from from certain uh, uh, educational institutes, but uh, they are also heavily working on that as well. Like recently, we sat with uh, with a committee um, from the local uh, educational government that was working on uh, making sure that the university is up to standard and uh, and all. Actually, they they are. That was that visit was for uh, for two new programs that are in planning. Uh, the, the the programs that are already there that Haley went uh, over um, are all accredited accredited by the Ministry of Education here. So uh, yeah, basically it it was the uh, what the university offers the accommodation and uh, and the stipend uh, uh, components and. Uh, the the faculty profiles that were here in the university are, are also uh, very distinguished faculty, and you get to work with some of the best people. Like uh, I think the my advisors and I, I work with three advisors. Uh, I think uh, I've been very lucky to like work with these people. Uh, they're always ready to help, and uh, and I actually work with three uh, advisors and. Usually in our weekly meetings, all of them are present, and uh, yeah, they are there. It's Dr. Fahad <laughs> and Dr. Uh, Rao, yeah, the third row. Yeah, so I, I just noticed that uh, Ariana joined, Haley. Uh, so Ariana is the current student, uh, uh, graduate student council president. Um, I think, who asked you? Yeah, Nadim, I hope uh, I'm, I answered your question, Nadim. Great. Thank you so much, Nadim. I see your hand still raised. So briefly, I'll just have um, Ariana. So glad you're able to join us. I would love to have you kind of introduce yourself um, and then we'll get to Nadim's question as well. So um, Ariana, if you could share a little bit about um, who you are in terms of um, where you're from country wise, what program um, you're studying at MVCU AI. And the first question we had is just kind of how did you learn about the university? And maybe you could also answer Nadim's original question as well, which was kind of what made you choose MBZUAI versus other institutions? As we're sure you had multiple options and lots of things to consider. So thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ariana. I come from Costa Rica. Um, I'm doing my master's in machine learning here in MBZUAI. And uh, what made me choose MBZ instead of other universities? Well, I think it's, um, first of all, is the idea that it's the first university related to machine learning and to artificial intelligence. Uh, often we hear about universities that have like other areas, but this is like specialized on, on this particular topic. So once you come here, everything turns to be related to artificial intelligence. So I think that's a great way of um, you get yourself soaked in the details and topics, hackathons, etc. related to that. 
Um, and also, I really like the, the place that it is, like in UAE. Uh, UAE is like uh, a point that it's like a hub for many going to many other countries. And since I come from Costa Rica, uh, this is like a foreign, <laughs> very, very far away place destination, uh, which I've been able to explore and visit like the neighboring countries as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ariana. And thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, I actually had the pleasure of getting to do a summer in Costa Rica in high school. And it's one of my favorite places um, in the world. It's amazing, as well as UAE, of course, as well. So excited to have you here. We're excited to work with you as well with the Graduate Student Council. Um, they really are phenomenal students who are kind of the, the best and brightest of the university um, who help kind of lead the way. So thank you all so much for that as well. Um, Dean, just want to check, see if you have another question with your hand raised. Uh, yeah, I did. Is that fine? Great. Sure, please do. So uh, first, I just want to thank Ariana and Sultan for answering my original question. That was very helpful. Um, my question now is, and this is going to be more, uh, I'd love to hear what Ariana has to say about this, because I plan on going for the machine learning program as well. What kind of like career opportunities have now opened for you after you've completed this degree? Or uh, I don't know if you guys have actually completed it. I think you're about to. And uh, do you feel ready to like tackle the career uh, sort of world of AI and machine learning? Like, do you feel prepared to go after that? Or maybe if you guys are even thinking about starting like your own sort of businesses, um, do you feel like you've been equipped well enough to do that kind of stuff? Or yeah, so that's my question. Okay, so um, related to that, I would say that actually here we've been trained even for uh, all the theoretical area. So we can even like try to be like in the academia, which is like very extensive in terms of uh, theory, math, etc. cetera. Um, for the industrial area or the industry, let's call it like that. So industry wise, I think with only the things that you're learning in the first semester is enough to go to industry. So that's why many of the students in the, in the summer break, they're eight, like they would start working in the internships and they will have everything like the tools. Uh, what will happen in the second, third and the remaining um, semesters is that the topics will be let's say like polished because they haven't changed that much. Like they incorporate some of them uh but i've i revisited every topic again and like reapplying it through the labs etc so i would say actually yeah from the first semester like you will get a lot of theory that it will be practically enough to start in industry um here as well like we have like hackathons etc and I've seen how there's a lot of opportunities to um, try to open your, your startup. So I've heard uh, some students that are doing groups and they're participating in these hackathons that are actually to get some sort of fund to start their hackathons um, and their startup, sorry. Uh, but in my personal experience, I've seen that it's very interesting that there's there's there was a career fair here in the university. Uh, we got the contact of around 20 companies and I just visited, I gave my CV and from there I've received a few calls and I'm not even yet to be graduated. So I feel like um, the university is working really hard to get um, students to be with a job right over in case that they want to explore the other area of startups it's also a possibility but yeah there is great engagement between universities and companies that's great thank you so much ariana i appreciate it maybe sultan if you want to share your insight as well yeah uh 
Yeah, I, ju I just want to mention that also Ariana is a second is a, a student from the second batch, so she's yet to graduate in in May, I think. Um, so uh, about the uh, readiness to like the job market, uh, the internship was uh, actually was a very good point, and uh, internships are now are now I think mandatory for for. Uh, for the students, they they saw that this is uh, this is actually very needed and uh, essential, so they made it uh, mandatory for students now. Um, uh, also about the point that uh, how much we get through uh, in the first semester, actually this is one of the like pain points that students have in the beginning is how much we go through in the courses. Like there is a lot that we cover, I think more than uh, like what most universities cover in, in, the, in the four months time. And uh, it, it, gets, it gets you through a lot of concepts that you would be able by the end of that semester to, to uh, hold, like hold discussions with, uh, with people about those uh, computer vision topics or machine learning topics. Uh, in the first semester, you, you, you take uh, three, three courses. Um, yeah, I, 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 did, uh, I did my internships. Uh, in my batch, students had the option to opt out of internships. I did my internship, and after I did my internship, I did actually uh, well in, uh, in my internship. So uh, it seems that I learned from the university. I did it, I did it after uh, doing three, three semesters. Yeah, so I'm in my second summer. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it was it was actually eye opening because I I got the chance to apply uh, what I learned through the labs and through the courses in a, in a real world problem and by myself. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I actually after I did my internship, I started uh, asking students to try and do two internships because <laughs> it it really helps you a lot. And uh, yeah, most most students uh, who who did the internship like actually. I've never heard the student complain that uh, that the internship, uh, like they had tasks that, that they could not do. It's usually that this, the complaint is that the, the, the internship is not enough or something like that. So yeah, I think you'll be fine in terms of, of readiness. Awesome, thank you, Sultan. Um, Nadim, feel free to ask your third question and then we'll go to our uh, next prospective student. Yeah, sorry if I'm hogging the questions over no here, but um, thanks again for your answers. Those were very great. Um, this one is like less academically related, but as someone who like has a bunch of hobbies and really values his free time, what can you guys say about the amount of time that you were spending in courses versus the amount of time that you had to like pursue your other interests and whatnot? And related to that, uh, I mean, I live in Qatar and it's pretty dry and deserted here like not really much to do is it the same sort of in the uae um or is there like interesting things to do around like just as a student as someone who wants to explore the area that they're in and learn about the culture so thanks i don't i don't have a lot of hobbies i just work so i leave that question to ariana <laughs> I can say for a fact that Sultan is like more a home person. <laughs> I'm the other opposite. <laughs> um, well, UAE, and like I think the thing that we like to do the most in terms of the students is like uh, going to the desert and seeing like the stars. And this is like the cheapest option. <laughs> so it's there for free it, we there are some students that go once a month that actually is like super pretty but in terms of time uh, I think like in any university in the beginning you will have more time to do the things between your hobbies and the academia it, it will be fine there's going to be peak moments such as uh, when there is midterms uh, midterms no hobbies that week is full studies um but i think like uh in terms of 
to do things we have here like very close Dubai and Abu Dhabi they're places that they're full of events such as concerts um, shows like so in the weekends um, many students tend to go like to these uh, shows etc uh, concerts even like traveling if it's like summer break uh traveling it will happen for sure um although i i must mention that depends like it starts shifting so in the beginning that it's like more related to the classes you you'll have like this experience that i said that midterms is when when is the highest load etc but then the second year that it's full research uh it will depend a lot like in the lab that you are deciding to work with or the supervisors so there are some supervisors that are super engaged and they want like students to be most of the time in the labs etc there are some that are more like um tend to work like independently so you will have let's say like more uh freedom of let's say that you're going on a wednesday to somewhere so this kind of things, it, it will depend on mostly the second year with which lab we, um, you're choosing to work with. But first year is like any other um, university where you're having these moments of full going into studies. That's great, thank you. And I know um, this is explained in some of the even FAQs. I encourage any students who, um, are interested in just kind of learning more as well there's a great faqs page on the mpc ua website i'll drop this in the chat too um it has some great resources everything from admissions student experience i know as well and we can talk about this a little bit more i want to get to our next um, perspective students questions but even on campus i um was able to um, come visit the university um, back uh, just a couple months ago um the facilities are also really phenomenal in terms of gyms cafes retail outlets um laboratories all, again all right on campus or nearby as well so there's also lots of resources to utilize um that are actually right in your quote uh university backyard as well so definitely encourage you all to take a look at this faqs page if you haven't already for those resources too um and then for our next student also i'm so sorry i see your hand raised can you let us know also uh, at least for me how to pronounce your name because i want to make sure i pronounce it correctly okay yeah good afternoon everyone uh, I'm glad to be part of this meeting. My name is Okechuku Madukwe. I actually want to know for myself, I'm actually working on the office, so I wanted to know if I could drop my questions on the chat, would that be fine? So as to enable me to uh, express myself more freely, would that be fine? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I'll do just that now. Thank you. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Right. Absolutely. All right. Really? Yes. I can see there's uh, uh, some uh, new uh, perspective students have been added to the, to, the, to our um, today's conversation. Maybe they have some questions to the current students at MBGOI. I can um, see that uh, some of them are from the region of Eastern Europe and Central Asia. So guys, please go ahead, ask your questions. What are you interested in? That's a good opportunity to talk to uh, MBGOI students directly. Perfect. Thank you, Shakaru. And yes, you're welcome. If your internet connection isn't too stable, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. You can also use the raise hand function um, and then um, ask your question um, verbally as well. We will um, go ahead. As it, um, Milana, feel free to unmute yourself, uh, ask your question as well. Thank you so much for joining us. If you can also share maybe what country that you came from and if you know what um, program you're interested in studying as well. If not, don't worry. Oh, hi. Now I think uh, the sound is working. Uh, yes. Yeah. So thank you for the meeting. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, students who have already studied something like for a year. Um, maybe you have um, attended some internships and if you have, can you uh, tell me and all of the students who are trying to apply what uh, internships and all of this stuff. I'm just really interested in what companies maybe or 
just what skills were important and how was the process organized. I think Sultan can help us there. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you for the question. I um, well, and and how did I start my? So in the university, in the student affairs uh, department, we have a student careers uh, office that ha that usually helps students with uh, with their uh, anything related to their internships and post graduation full time. Uh, jobs. So this uh, office is ready to like um, uh, guide you how to uh, polish your CV, how to present your uh, LinkedIn account profile, and and all that. Uh, also, you can either uh, get help from them to uh, to find an internship through the networking events and the uh, career fairs. Or you can uh, find your own internship like through your network. Uh, so my internship was in a research center. So in Abu Dhabi, there is an there is a I think three or four years ago they uh, established a research uh, council. Uh, that's not the literal name, but it, this is what they do. Uh, so they. Uh, started this initiative where they want to start uh, to have uh, research centers that help uh, develop and, and uh, innovate. So the uh, organization the internship at is called Technology Innovation Institute. And they, they it's, a, it's a big organization. It's a big organization. They have 10 research centers. I was working in only one of those 10 research centers. And uh, they they basically do research and prototyping. This is a this is a very common uh, question from students that are interested in the practical part of uh, of our study. Uh, so some students would like to just continue in the academic path. Some students are more interested in the applic uh, applied uh, applications apl applied uh, path. So yeah, I think uh, this is the companies that attended the. Oh, okay. This is the, some of the companies where uh, students uh, work. Yeah. Uh, so my internship, I think it was uh, uh, it was a great, uh, great one because it also showed me uh, like both paths: the the uh, research path and uh, and the uh, prototyping and apl applied uh, path. So I think actually one of like. Working in a research center is can be like very challenging because unlike um, that's at least what I think companies usually use what what research that is uh, has already uh, was done and research centers have to push uh, the boundaries of where what we know and to where we are at. So I think that working in a research center is actually like a very good challenge for for. Uh, That's great. If Thank I may, you. If, if I may clarify, uh, uh, just another a small question for this Sultan. Um, most of the students, the prospects, who, when they are asking about career opportunities, they are kind of wondering, are you able, are you guys able to um, select the internships which are available? So, do you choose? You have opportunity to kind of adjust it to your project, right? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the uh... Uh, yeah, that's a good point. One of the requirements for me to get uh, be allowed to do the internship uh, is that my academic supervisor has to approve of it. So his signature would would actually mean that this internship is uh, in line with what um, you're doing uh, for your thesis, for your degree, and that it will not uh, uh, like divert uh, your focus on something else. Yeah. So you get to choose, yeah. So it was uh, not a summer internship, but an internship for the whole year. Uh, internships in our university, and maybe Haley can also elaborate on that, uh, is, is between May and uh, September. So you will only have 
the three months of the summer uh, period to do your internship. And your internship um, has to be a minimum of six weeks. So it's, it's not a big, uh, it's not a big uh, requirement, but um, usually two months internship uh, is, is two to three months is actually doable in the summer, yeah. Yeah, so but just to um, add on to what Tom is saying, he's absolutely right. There's also, um, I'll just reshare this um, slide for you all as well. This was shared from um, the Career Services Office at um, MBC UAI. So this used to be, um, the first year, it wasn't um, kind of a formal part of the student experience to do an internship. Um, it was just kind of a, um, you know, add on. However, the universities continue to prioritize this as an experience to obtain while you're a student. Um, so again, the Career Services Student Success Center um, and the um, Student Affairs Office has done a really fantastic um, job of identifying and placing students with really fantastic opportunities. The kind of uh, required, if you will, formal experience is what Sultan um, was speaking of, where obviously you're in coursework throughout the academic year. So a lot of times students will go abroad um, or will have experiences um, at these variety, you can see these internship opportunities as well as different sectors um, to kind of fulfill that requirement that their advisor is signing off on. I believe as well also from what Emma has previously shared from the Career Services Office, there's also students who are continuing to do internships and research experiences as well. Um, but the kind of experience Sultan is referencing as well is kind of that um, more formalized um, experience as a part of the educational kind of package at MBC UAI, if you will. Um, so again, you can see a variety of folks um, doing experiences that are, again, from uh, institutions based in Singapore, Germany, the UK, UAE. Um, it's very global, which is fantastic. And everything from, you know, Etihad Airways to um, Oxford to different areas, Technology Innovation Institute, Sorbonne um, University. So you can see there's, a, again, a variety. This is not the full list. This is just examples of what students have gone on to do while they are at the university. Um, I do see a bunch of questions in the chat that I want to make sure that we have time to address as well. So for those who can't see the chat as well, there was one question that came in about more tangibly with the application process, um, wanting to know when to send in scores regarding the GRE or English language test. These are great questions. So encourage you as well when you have time, uh, we'll be sending out these admissions criteria slides and there's also really great uh, resources on the website to cover as well. But just to briefly share as well, one thing that's really fantastic about NBC UAI is they um, will allow students to um, initiate and submit their application without their most recent English language scores. Um, we understand, especially with the effects of COVID, there can be delays in getting to get those scores or those tests completed. So you're welcome to, there's a box you can check in your application to say that you'll submit these scores later. So if you don't have those available when you're ready to submit, that's okay. You can submit them later. But you can see here the minimum total scores. Um, and if you have scores from the last two calendar years, you're welcome to submit that. So obviously it's 2022. So if you have scores even dating as far back as 2020, you're welcome to submit those as part of the criteria. But if your scores are older than two years, um, you will be required again if you were admitted to the university to retake the exam. Um, again, this is for those who are non-native English speakers, for those who are outside of the um, kind of uh, waived countries, it's also outlined on the website. So you're welcome to reach out to any of us on the team for more specific questions on that. Um, regarding the GRE, it's also really fantastic. You can see here for the general track for master's and PhD, it's a plus to take the GRE, but it's not required as a part of your application materials. Um, so again, that's up to kind of your discretion. Um, however, if you were someone who had a bachelor's degree and wanted to apply to the PhD track, you would need to take the GRE and you can see the minimum scores required um, for um, you know, competitiveness for admission. So hopefully that was helpful in answering that question. Again, you're welcome to reach out to us anytime if you have more um, specific questions regarding that. Um, in addition, this might be a good question for um, Sultan. There's a question about if computer vision courses are more focused on theory or on practice, or maybe if it's a combination of both. Again, I know um, 
that's your focus, Sultana. So if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, good question. Um, so computer vision, when you're coming uh, to study this uh, program, you will I'll try to make it quick. Uh, you will um, think that, oh, you will start immediately with the neural networks and CNNs and, and all that. Uh, but it's not the case. You will quickly find out that first you will go through the basics and the origins of image analysis because computer vision or like AI and computer vision is, uh, is basically AI or machine learning or deep learning applied on uh, previous uh, image analysis methods that were more uh, manual. So uh, you will, you will courses usually go through first go through all the history all the uh, uh, basics and al uh, basics algor basic algorithms of uh, image analysis you will have a good understanding of that and then it will they will inject some of the deep learning uh, parts in the in the final weeks in the computer that's that's the computer uh, vision track so i noticed uh, that uh, it actually makes a difference in students students who come out the machine learning uh, track would have better, stronger experience, a stronger uh, grasp of the theory. Uh, students, uh, students in uh, the computer vision track would uh, have a better grasp, a grasp when dealing with images and like digital uh, images and so on. So uh, that's uh, that's one. And the other day, uh, maybe Ariana can also say, talk about this. I saw a few students walking around with uh, with a Nikon camera. So I was like, oh, it's that time of the, of the semester again. Because one of the labs in our courses, actually they give, they give uh, the groups of students, they give them cameras to go and actually take pictures and, and try and uh, experiment with different uh, uh, settings that you can, uh, and how those settings affect those pictures so that you can know more about how optics work and how, uh, and how images are taken. And this is all, uh, a course in, in like in, in your program and in, in uh, AI. So I think uh, they, they, ha they have it all covered in terms of uh, theory and practice, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, Sultan. That's a really helpful detailed answer. Um, I just added this in the chat as well, but for those who might be watching the recording, there's also a question about um, the um, English language proficiency, as well as any exemptions that can be made. Uh, this is outlined on the website, so you can go under the um, admissions criteria for, again, either your respective master's or PhD program. The English language proficiency and waivers are um, outlined here. So again, you can see what certificates are valid for either two years or 18 months, uh, what countries are eligible for waivers, or again, if there have been studies conducted um, in those countries as well. Um, typically, waiver decisions will be made within seven days after receiving all requirements. So again, that's something that's outlined also in the application itself. So you're welcome to submit a waiver request. Um, just making sure that I'm caught up on um, the questions here. Um, yes, we thank you. We will be sharing the recording um, with all participants as well. And thank you for addressing Sultan. Um, I see um, Anas is joining us from Algeria. Great to have you here. Um, graduated with a computer engineering degree, interested in machine learning, which is, um, I believe, what Ariana is studying, um, and wanting to ask if they feel the program is more directed towards research and academia or more professional or going to combination. Um, and again, this individual is looking to apply to professional internships or jobs right after the program. Um, and then the the um, scholarship is a full scholarship. I can just address that quickly. It does cover all um, areas. So everything from tuition and fees, housing, insurance, there's a monthly stipend. It's fully inclusive, which is, um, again, a really fantastic package. So maybe Ariana, if you want to share a little bit about the experience um, in machine learning and the academia research versus kind of professional elements. Okay. So I would say, it's more oriented towards research and academia than industry. Um, although you're going to learn what it's needed for industry, 
because you're learning the academia part. So when you, you start applying certain things and you have to do the projects because it's mainly, you can, uh, in machine learning, you would come up with the project, you will propose it. And in that project is when you are learning, let's say like the skills for the industry. But in terms of the classes, it's very, um, academy oriented and also research because that's the idea of the second year that you were going to apply everything that you've learned to continue the research well to start and continue the research thank you Ariane. i really appreciate that um it's really helpful to see and thank you all so much for your questions so far we have about um um five to 10 more minutes as we um, are starting to wrap up today's sessions. These questions are great. So please continue to add these to the chat or use the raise hand function. Uh, we really value your questions. So please feel free to continue to ask those. Um, maybe while students are, um, you know, thinking about what other questions that they have left. Um, one question I have that I would love to hear um, from both Ariana and Sultan is, um, you know, if there's someone again, maybe even in our Zoom room who's thinking about applying, but maybe they're a bit unsure, they're a bit intimidated as again, the scholarship package is really phenomenal. And obviously the university is small. So again, there are lots of students who apply, uh, but obviously not everyone is able to get a spot. So what would you share with someone in the Zoom room or maybe who's watching the recording later? Um, how would you encourage someone who's thinking about applying, but unsure? Should I go first? Yeah, okay. So if I were you, I would just apply because first uh, it's it's better to, uh, like you, you can't actually think about this. You don't have an option before you apply because uh, you still did not get admitted. So uh, I would apply and uh, once I get the admission and then I actually have those two choices of either going or not going. Uh, so I think uh, it's not like it wouldn't be worth thinking about it now. So go through the application once you have the admission and then you put uh, like uh, thinking into, into uh, going or not. And uh, uh, yeah, basically, even if you don't get accepted and then later on you decide that, okay, you want to uh, apply, the next time you apply, at least you will be familiar with the admission uh, admission process. So it will not be your first time. So yeah, so if you get in, you have that option. If you don't get in, at least you went through the application process. Next time you do it, you will be more confident. Yeah. Um, in my case, I would say that, well, same as Sultan, better to apply and not, uh, Hold yourself because your application isn't perfect. I know that many of us want to send the perfect um, intention letter, etc. But sometimes what it requires is just to send and see what happens. Uh, I would say besides that, um, be honest. Uh, I think most of the time, uh, it's easy to see when someone is not being their, their themselves. So be honest, show whatever you have done. And if you are actually um, enthusiastic about what you've done, uh, talking a little bit about my, ex my experience, I, I did a lot of data analysis, but only one thing in machine learning. One, and it's actually CV, like, I did something with some plates with the teeth showing gums. And I really liked that it was so easy. Like for me, it was like a black box magic thing. And I was like, I just want to know more how this happened. You know, like how the algorithm was able to say, this is useful for dentists. This is not useful for dentists. And I think by having this spark of getting to, I wanted to know how this happened. Um, even though I'm not, I wasn't an expert in machine learning and in computer vision, I, I think I got the, the seat because they, they can see that actually I'm, I'm willing to see 
all the math behind and how, what it's happening. So I would say, besides the letter of intention, the next step, I think if I'm not wrong, it's gonna be like an interview. And in this interview is where you can tell them what have you played with, what have you done uh, that actually caught your attention and make you into this world of machine learning, computer vision, not uh, NLP, et cetera. So that will be my recommendation. That's great. Thank you so much, Ariana. Um, you kind of answered the first question that we had from Milana in terms of the tips for the considering the motivation letter, any points that should be covered as well. Um, just to kind of add to that as well, I do think that um, one note as well that we have that we'll share with students, we're going to be hosting a variety of sessions kind of as we continue on this year that will be more topic based focusing on the motivation letter as well as the admissions process in general. There's also an entry exam um, where if your uh, you know, uh, application is reviewed favorably, that's a step. We also have an admissions guide for that um, or for the entry exam. Um, so there's sample questions that are also available online. So we're happy to share those resources. I really like the second part of the question from Alana. So I want to make sure we have time for that as so we have a couple minutes left. Um, so just asking a question about enjoying life on campus or time for out of um, studying activities. I know that was addressed a bit earlier, but we have some folks who are new to the call who weren't on there before. So, and I know we talked about how Sultan's a bit more of a homebody, um, but would love to hear either from Ariana again or Sultan if there are other notes, again, things either on campus or off campus that's helpful. I know when I came to Abu Dhabi, I had the chance to visit the Louvre in Abu Dhabi, which was actually very close to campus, which was beautiful. Um, and there's some really fantastic um, areas around campus, but we'd love to hear from Ariana maybe first yeah. if you have any thoughts or Sultan. Oh, okay. I, I wanted, because Ariana talked about it, uh, when Ariana talked about it, I wanted to add, I think she also mentioned this, that uh, Dubai is, is around an hour and a half away. Abu Dhabi, the Yas Island is like 20 minutes away. Uh, and uh, in the university, I think there is a group for so many, like, uh, so many different sports, uh, uh, students with uh, similar interests. I think this is becoming easier because in the beginning we had the problem that we couldn't form a basketball team because there weren't enough students. Uh, but, uh, but I think this is easier now. People uh, have uh, groups that go and play football, uh, basketball. I think uh, boxing, uh, there is a gym, we have a swimming pool. Uh, so there is there is a lot uh, to do on the campus and uh, in Abu Dhabi in general. So yeah, and it's not that I don't have hobbies. It's that my hobbies are usually considered work <laughs> for other people. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm gonna mention a few hobbies. Uh, okay, so we have the Yas yeah circuit. Um, that it's the Formula One circuit, but actually the it's open on the weekday, weekdays and you can go cycling for free. So I know many students, uh, we go Mondays and Wednesdays to cycle. It's like 50 minutes away from campus and it's free. Um, 15. Besides, huh? 15. I say 50? No, oh, 15, 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's, I think there's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with Steven, uh, with Steven, what else? Uh, we play badminton, like sports uh, here is like the biggest hobbies, let's say. Um, but there, there's also a club of games and so they, they would bring like board games. Um, yeah, but these are like things more like on campus, like things that we would do even on weekdays. Um, am I missing something? Like there's there's many activities. Badminton yeah. is one of the biggest activities that we have here. <laughs> Absolutely, no worries. Thank you for sharing that, it's great. I know that we're heading to the top of the hour. So I wanna um, allow everyone to continue on with their mornings and their days. These are really great questions. I really um, thank you all so much for sharing such insightful and thoughtful questions for our current students. Um, a huge thank you to Sultan and Ariana um, for taking your time to meet with prospective students and be able to share um, thoughts with everyone. Um, 
really quickly, again, I see Nadine's hand raised. So we'll get to that in a second. I just want to very quickly encourage students who um, are not familiar or aware, again, please take time. No more questions, to... really. Oh, sure. No problem. I'll get to that in just a second. Just want to encourage students who, in case they have to go to class or other things, just to take a look at the website if you haven't already for MBZU AI. Um, there's the Apply Now button, so you're welcome to do that as well um, and register an application. Um, when you go, um, you'll put in your basic information, start your application. Please don't forget to indicate IIE when you initiate your application so we can support your application process. And let us know if you have any questions. And again, I know we have two questions. So Ariana and Sultan, if you don't mind staying on for just a moment longer, we'd love to get to those and then we'll close for today. Um, and we thank you all so much for coming. If anyone needs to hop off, no worries. Um, so Nadine, feel free to ask your questions and then we'll get to the last question in the chat. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to ask if it would be possible like to contact the students after this meeting with their, are, are they going to share their emails or anything like that in case we have some follow up questions. Um, great question. So I uh, reach out typically to the current students and ask um, who's willing to share their contact information. Again, you're welcome to reach out to them directly on chat here and see if they're willing to connect with you as well. Uh, but any students who have indicated that they're I'm willing to share their contact information. I definitely share that out. Um, I see Sultan's already put his LinkedIn in the chat. He is very active on LinkedIn. It feels like he's a little bit of a celebrity. I see his name pop up. It's amazing. Um, so definitely encourage them to do that. Ariana, if you also feel comfortable doing dropping your LinkedIn or other information, please feel free to do so. But they're a fantastic resource. Yeah, I just saw that she dropped the link as well. So I'll be happy to share that out um, with students as well. Um, so thank you both so much for that. And thank you, Nadine. That's a great question. Be able to connect with everybody. Um, lastly, as we wrap up, um, I see there's a question in the chat about the STEM major background. So I'll address this very quickly. Um, so having a STEM background is very important to being able to uh, be successful on the program. Um, obviously there is, as you heard from the students, there's that kind of course-based element and the entry exam kind of helps identify that with mathematical skills as well. Um, and then great question about economic statistics, uh, economic metrics and math. So the I can easily address that statistics, the econ metrics and math, those are under STEM majors, which is fantastic. So if you have experience and background in those, this is great. We also do have a lot of students who often have economics experience, um, but they also have kind of paired elements of STEM as well. So happy to connect with you further, or again, your regional representative to get a better sense of your background. But all those subjects are definitely relevant to um, MBC UAI. So, Thank you all so much for your time. Thank you again to Ariana and Sultan. I'm really grateful for your time. Congratulations for all the upcoming graduates um, in December and good luck with all of those deadlines, submitting those assignments. And thank you all so much to the prospective students for joining. Stay in touch, keep us up to date on your application process and stay tuned for upcoming sessions that will be topic-based as well as getting to meet with other students. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day and a good rest of your evening to those who are in later time zones. Good luck to everybody. Good luck to all. Have a good Bye. Time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.